Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of the Soul Path Podcast. Today, I am honored to bring on the show Jasmine Wynn. Jasmine is an incredible Qigong healer. She has studied under masters all around the world and has brought this healing gift to many, many people. She has a Qigong healing center in Florida and so much insight into awakening that own healing intelligence within us so that we can heal ourselves, we can heal our families, our communities, and ultimately heal the world. So this is uh, just a powerful conversation. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. I went out for a walk, and as I was coming back, there were 15 deer walking down uh, down the trail, and so that was kind of neat. I thought that's a that's a good amount of deer, and it <laughs> just kind of reminds me that you know if if things seem chaos and out of control, if I just pause and go connect with nature, nature is flowing beautifully all the time, and so that just wow. helps. Wow! How lucky. 15 deers. Yeah. What 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 age range? Uh you know there were several small deer. There were I would guess maybe probably I don't know, eight eight adults and eight kids probably or something like that. There were some small ones that looked like ah. they were probably born this springtime. Like they you have a meeting, a family reunion, huh? Yeah, yeah. A lot of uh a lot of the a lot of wildlife here, turkeys and deer and, you know, lots of birds. It's just very beautiful. I love to uh, be living where I'm living now. It's only been a, less than a year since I moved. So it's still settling in and just really appreciating the uh, the beauty of where we're at right now. So Wonderful. You're so lucky. Actually, you did amazing. I saw you and your wife, like... Like something I saw on TV, like <laughs> building something from nothing, right? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was a great adventure just to be able to do that together as a family. And everything that we have is something that we've built together. And then, of course, we had friends uh, help in times when it was more work. Like standing up the walls was, you know, having family and friends to come stand up the walls. And it was... Uh, just a really incredible experience. I think especially incredible experience for my daughter who is, you know, a teenager. And so for her to be, we have lived and moved quite a bit, but we've lived in big, nice houses. So like from a six bedroom, four bath house uh, to a 500 square foot cabin that we built by ourselves was a big adjustment. And anyway, it's just been pretty awesome. So. That's really amazing. <laughs> That not many people can experience that nowadays. Mm. Nowadays, that not often. Like where I grow up, that like every day. You know, we build a little house together, neighbor come together and build a house. But I don't ever see that in the U.S., but <laughs> it's happened. Yeah. You did it. That's amazing. <laughs> not long ago, it seems like most, you know, more people, more, more of the population experienced that. Uh, and then now it's, you know, it's so modern, it's so urban, it's so, you know, big communities and all that. You, people just go buy a house or an apartment or what have you. And so the, the, the experience of homesteading, of building your own house, of, you know, breaking the land and doing all this kind of putting in roads and all that uh, is, is definitely kind of a unique experience yeah, and yeah. very grounding. It helps to be very grateful, I think. And then it sets me up to then, you know, be full and to be able to give back of my abundance. <laughs> so, yeah, yes, it's really awesome. It's wonderful experience for your daughter. Yeah, thank you. Wow, that's thank a, you. that's wonderful. Oh. I really, you know, like admire you guys. I feel like amazed. I'm like, wow, he's doing it. Oh my god, <laughs> you're so strong. <laughs> Jasmine, I am grateful to have you on the Soul Path podcast today. I'm excited to talk about the spiritual journey and to learn more of your wisdom and insight. And I was looking through your uh, profile. Holy smokes, what an incredible journey to have grown up in Vietnam, to come to the U.S., go to school, go to college, and only you know go through that kind of personal crisis to come back to Qigong again as a healing and then you know, where you are now having studied with masters and, you know, to be able to help so many people, uh, I just think is a super beautiful story. And so I am eager. Can you just kind of, well, let me say this before we start out something I like to do just for fun as a icebreaker, 
to keep it loose. Uh, if you would be willing to finish the sentences, life is, people are, I am, just from the heart, complete those sentences. I would love to hear your answers. Oh, okay, cool. Well, very nice to be with you here. And uh, life is interesting. People are born healers. Uh, uh, I'm here feeling blessed and grateful. Beautiful. People are healers. That is uh, deep and profound truth to me that we have this wisdom in us, the healing, the healer within us. Uh, I, so much of this uh, speaks to and resonates with my life. But I'd like to go ahead and start out with your story. Can you sh can you think back and share a little bit about where your journey started at as far as uh you know, in the beginning, where where were you at and what were you learning? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so you already mentioned I was born and raised in South Vietnam. Um, my dad but my dad died before I was born, so I had my mom, and mainly my mom had to work to raise four poor children. So I live with my grandma most of the time. And she happened to be a holistic healer. She helped heal people in the village. I helped her to make medicine. So growing up, that's probably the, the best part of my childhood because we had no TV, nothing, no electric, uh, no water, nothing. So I, I have really nothing like exciting for a childhood at a kid um, rather than, you know, hang out with my grandma and make herbal medicine with her. So that was wonderful um, experience Your for me. Yeah, and then I grew up and I left Vietnam like anyone else trying to get to the better place. I went to US, I went to Rollins College for my business and um, had um, doing business and doing everything like everyone else, have families. And, uh, but I still have suffered some problem with my upper back and anxiety. Mm. And um, I went and got, you know, doctor, everybody tried to help me to figure out what problem with my upper back. And uh, for years, if nothing happened, not, nothing can, no one can figure out what's wrong. <laughs> so I went to um, to the point that I said, well, I probably have to accept it part of my life and, um, you know, to, to deal with it. But at the same time, in the back of my mind, as it keeps saying there's a way to heal. There must be a way to heal. So I said, hmm. That's very interesting. So I went and practiced Qigong, which is something that I grow up with, familiar with, but not really act, you know, actively do it and almost forgotten. To be honest, almost forgotten because I moved to the U.S. trying to do everything like everybody here, try to learn you know, the way here, the way of life here, and uh, almost forget about it. Mm. But then I went and practiced Qigong. Then it, I was completely, the pain is gone, disappear. And I said, wait, it's, it's maybe just, you know, temporary, it's gonna come back, but no, I was completely healed. So then I said, wow, that's, that's something that's amazing. And along many years, I've been asking what really I want to do. I want to help people. I want to, um, how people are healthy and happy, but then there is nothing that be able to give me that. Not no kind, not kind of job or business that kind of give me that. But until she come healing me, and that was like this really big, clear answer for my question, like what I want to do. Beautiful. And um, so she can I can I ask before we move uh, too far past? I, I'm really curious about the uh, the healing that you witnessed and were grew up with. Right, you said you spent. Uh, most of your time with your grandma making herbal medicines. Was she also using the Qigong and teaching uh, 
qigong motions and using the the herbal or was she mostly a medicinal healer like that she was both now back then i didn't call it qigong the word is not the same first of all <laughs> vietnamese language yeah so second of all she practiced energy healing yeah but not necessarily say qigong or ricky or anything it just practiced energy healing, oriental medicine. So see you oriental medicine, which is herbal medicine. And when she practiced healing people, I can see that she healed with energy. See, feeling people pulse, see, help, help people with energy, see, tell them what to eat, that to balance the yin and the yang, mm-hmm. the yin energy and the yang. So she gave them the, the prescription, like, okay, what to eat, what to drink, and what, you know, what to do with their, you know, daily and a few movements. And also she gave them herbal medicine. Wow. So in a way, yeah. Very holistic, kind of a whole body. I mean, she's reading the energy, but she's saying maybe it's maybe it's the body needs to move. Maybe it's to bring balance into the, the yin and yang, uh, the energy centers yeah. of the body. And this is this is kind of um, it's subtle stuff. Right. And so the the spiritual journey is oftentimes, you know, it's a lifetime process, but it's one way of looking at it is learning how to tune in to these subtle things, you know, the subtle energy in the body. It's all around all the time, the life force energy, the energy of the universe, the cosmos, whether it's the chi, uh, the meridians in traditional Chinese medicine, oriental medicine, or if it's the prana and the nadis in sanskrit or in yoga it's all the same understanding that we are essentially energetic beings and this is uh to me as a spiritual energy i'm curious if in your childhood if there was any any sense of spirituality associated with the healing or was you know was there any other kind of spiritual teachings infused in that or was it just straight up healing well, it's very interesting. When I grew up, I did not know very much about, you know, we didn't even talk about things. You know, most, they didn't even teach or talk much about things. And Qigong wasn't even allowed in China, right? So a lot of people don't even know about Qigong. But I remember there was many um um occasion that I know that my neighbors, he helped people, you know, overcome with many problems without medicine or without, you know, going to the doctor or anything. So he do something. And at me as a child, I was just amazed and I didn't understand what did he do. But now I understand what he did with energy. It and, seemed like uh, magic, like a miracle to kind of yes. Or, yeah. Yes. Well, when a kid I had no idea. I had no idea, but I just like, wow. And we know that when we need help, we go there, you know, and then, and then, so just talk about how that I start really feel like my journey halfway of the earth from yeah. Vietnam to the U.S. Finally, I feel like Qigong bring me home. All of a sudden, I connected with my childhood, which is, I, like I mentioned, almost forgotten. You know, like nothing really significant. But then, then that that was a big aha moment, and I feel like that's answered the question. Something that it's been telling me there's a way to heal, and there's something that I'm here for. I was born here for, and I've been searching, searching for years, and to the point like, what, what the deal? What I'm here for? Try to find, you know, try to figure out and. When the uh, when it, I found out the answer. I feel so grateful because the 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 problem is actually a message, or in a way that helped me, that lead me to where I find my answer, and also bring me home in a way I could not expect it. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me more about that. How you know where were you at in life when you had that? realization like yes this is i've been searching all of this time i've been living my life and doing the things that i've got to do Uh, i've been experimenting and exploring but all of a sudden in the moment of just i would imagine peace and clarity but describe it how it was for you uh, in that moment you knew 
Where, where were you at in life and what was kind of the circumstance that led up to that moment? Well, so I've been doing business and uh, doing well and fine with that. But I just keep feeling it, that not me, that not really what I want to do. I want to have more than just the living, but want to be able to do help other people. And um, about three years ago, when I went to a uh, temple and do a lot of meditation, now, interesting, my holistic um, Hillam grandma, she's Catholic, but my grandma, my father, my father, mother is like a monk. She lived, she used to live in the temple. So I was raised in Catholic and Buddhist. But then when I, I love to go to the, the temple to meditate. And uh, so about three years ago, I went to the temple very often to do meditation, retreat, stay there for two, three days, um, you know, eat the temple food, do some volunteer work and um, stay there meditation and learn. So I feel like that helped me to bring me to the alignment. So to bring me to, you know, to have that awaken. So mm. it's about three years. And in one of the meditation, it clearly answered my, you know, my prayer for my life purpose. And uh, so everything, it just come alive in a way that I could not ever be able to imagine or think in my normal mind. Right. It, it's come just like that. And I just, wow, I just, wow, because... I don't know what how to, to how to to express that. It's really an an awe for me. Um, so. So, but you were you were in the in the temple in meditation in that moment, and that was you had been praying and asking for this sense of purpose and to know what your mission was more than just business, something that satisfied your heart. And then you had that experience, and since then, did it was it was it like a. Uh, jump up off the seat and run out the door kind of experience. You know what I mean? Like, was it, was, it really, was it energizing and exciting or was it just a, how was that? I got, <laughs> well, no, I, when I, when I mentioned about three years, I go to the temple a lot. Yeah. The, the answer, the answer, the thing that comes to my mind when I'm in my, my bedroom, <laughs> lay down in my bedroom, that when it come into my mind, when I lay down, I just lay down and just let it be, let it be. And then it's clearly click in my mind, clearly, yeah. you know, but the, but what it lived there because I've been meditation a lot. And I think that helped me, helped me to be able to settle, ground it, and then be able to see things. So that I think the value that when I went to meditation a lot, it helped me to ground and then and yeah. open up and then help me and then allow things to flow. Then that's yeah. why maybe my mind and my body maybe it's ready. That's why it flows. So the idea flow clearly on to, to me. And I said, yeah, that that's what it, it is. That's what I've been asking for. And that's it, you know, the answer is clearly. <laughs> that's awesome. I think that it's such a, a relatable experience. You know, so many, so many people are seeking that sense of purpose. And what was I born to do? What, you know, what's my place in the world? Who am I? And something that, that you just said, I think is so true is it's, it's a process of prepare. You know, we have, life is preparing us. So all of life experience is preparing us to be able to deliver the gift. And a lot of times, you know, we get to a place where it's like, there's almost, there's almost like this crisis. Like I've tried everything, I've done everything, but nothing's quite right. And so there's a little bit of an internal going, Arr. and then comes the internal journey where we have to go like that infinite distance between the head and the heart, right? We have to get out of our mind and into our inner awareness, into our spiritual aware awareness, uh, soul level awareness in order to know what is the mission of my heart. And something that you had said in your, uh, in one of your writings was about, you know, how the soul knows how to heal this, you know, the body knows how to heal. The soul knows how to heal. The infinite wisdom is there. We just have to get out of our head. And in the same way, it seems like the, you know, the heart knows 
what you know what it was born to do you know we are in this body in this present moment for a purpose and that's something that we can understand at a level that is beneath thinking about it you know it's it's a sensing it's a feeling it's a you know for me i experience it as a deep inner peace and when i have that peace i know my heart is in alignment with divine intent or with what's you know right where i need to be in the moment and if i'm if I feel agitated or uneasy or uncertain or out of sorts, it's virtually always because I am back up in the mind. And, you know, this is very common. It's a human thing. We do it all the time throughout the day. When, uh, when, you, were, when you were going through the meditation, what, was, there any, was there any point in the, in the journey where you felt like you were kind of having a little bit of crisis in your life internally? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So that the, the power of that three years, I told you about three years that when I try to go to temple and meditate a lot, because I, that's how I feel. I feel I need, I, I feel like um, I want to find something. I've been asking, but I haven't really got the answer. So I went to temple. I said, I want to focus on meditation a little more and see. And then, um, and that's what I did. So, yeah, cross it. It's not like completely anything. That situation, no problem. But like my 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 soul, my spirit, like seeking, like not mm, feel like I'm here for something. I have to find it. I'm here for something, and I want to know, and I want to live, have a purpose. I want to live with a purpose, and. Uh, you know, and not just like enjoy life and travel and all that great thing. Yes, awesome. But still, I want a purpose so that I feel like I have a real reason, real purpose to live here and um, to, you know, really, truly worthwhile because everything else, it's just, you know, fun and it's going to be over. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just want something more profound. And that's what I was searching and uh, became a little bit depressed. I became a little bit depressed. I said, hmm, I don't really have a purpose. I don't really. So became a little bit depressed, and then I did meditation a lot. And then Qigong definitely heals me mm-hmm. from different dimensions. Because Qigong, it combined from breathing and meditation, basically a lot of meditation in Qigong with breathing, and uh, gentle movement, all that are the ingredients to put us in the, 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 the alignment for healing. Yes. So when we talk about Qigong is, you know, G is life force energy. G carry information. G has blueprint. G has intelligence. So it's more than just energy. So, so when we practice Qigong, that's how it healed me because all that is it know, it know what I need. So the, the machine could not know what's wrong with my back, but the G intelligent too, and then download the blueprint for me. So I would completely heal. Mm. So the thing is we talk about everything is deeply interconnected, right? So yes. my body and spirit together. And then I found that amazed with qigong because of that it it hit all the dimension all the dimension and then when we talk about healing in qigong i examine all seven dimensions how layer and layer and different but different dimension in terms of physical aspect lifestyle aspect um and um Emotional aspect, spiritual aspect, all of that, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's why um, when I know that Qigong do know that and help me, and that exactly I've been looking for, but I don't even know what the name of what I'm looking for. So that when it happened, I said, "Aha! Uh-huh, that's a big aha moment." It's amazing. Uh, you've said it so clearly. The you know, sometimes we don't have the language, we don't have the word, we don't know how to describe, but we experience, you know, we can experience the healing power of chi. 
in our body. And this is something that I, you know, I was introduced to martial arts and meditation at a young age. And so I had experience with it over the course of a lifetime, but it wasn't until my body was completely broken. I was dealing with depression, feeling stuck in, uh, you know, trapped in a, in a body that wouldn't function the way I wanted it to. So dealing with the mental pain, the emotional pain and the physical pain, uh, kind of crushed me, but it brought, it, it made my world, you know, so small that it caused me to focus inside. And when that spirit within awoke and all of a sudden it was like, wow, you know, I, I have to take charge here. I, in fact, am in charge because, you know, one of the phrases I learned through martial arts was that the chi follows the yi, which is the, you know, the body's energy follows the mind's intent. And when I realized, you know, to get the mind out of the way, to let the brain be in the body, I would find myself moving in ways that I'm not thinking about moving, but my body knows how to move. And it might be some, you know, and then I do this and it's, you know, snap, crackle, pop. And then there's a flooding sensation of warm circulation. And, you know, over the course of a couple of years in deep meditation, and I would say Qigong was, a, was um, it was not a label I had at the beginning, but it was certainly spontaneous Qigong that was happening through my body. The, the, the life force energy knows how to heal itself. It knows what your body needs. So allowing that to experience through the body is truly, truly transformational. And yeah, I mean, we can heal, you know, I, I, I did not have to amputate my foot. I was able to heal bone, ligament, tendons, things that, you know, uh, a lot of, until recently, even Western medicine thought, oh, this kind of stuff is just damaged. You can't fix it anymore, but we can heal at that deep level. And there's, there's profound tools provided through uh, TCM, traditional Chinese medicine and Qigong that help do this. But I believe kind of it's already in there, right? Like the, yes. it, it, this is the human potential. I believe that we are, you know, divine expressions, right? So we're, we're, we have this ability to just simply channel that, to simply be out of the way, but in the moment and allow it to work through us. Right. I'm, so we, 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 we are born healer. That means we have ability to heal ourselves. We have that supernatural power mm. and practice Qigong basically help us to cultivate that and awakening that and yeah. connect with that. And it's there and like a GPS, it's there, but if we, it needs some address. It needs an address so it can help us. So when we practice, basically I, I tell people that set the intention and do the practice with that intention, then the chi will, 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 will heal. But let's go of the mind, let's go of the worry. And that's why the movement and the breathing help to quiet the mind. And in fact, Qigong is an ancient practice, but I use it for our modern day, modern life right now. I can all, we can always help to get reduced stress and increase the energy. And that like very much immediately in two minutes movement or, or breathing, we can achieve that. Yeah. So yes, yes. it's you you already experience self-healing, you know, that that, that we, we born with. So yeah. the only thing that we have to put some little bit time and um and focus so that to allow the chi to heal for ourselves, to allow the chi to do the work. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm curious about, uh, you know, you've studied under Dr. Janky, I believe is how he pronounces his last name. Well, he, he is one of many masters that I learned from. Yeah. And I, I, reading in reading his work, which I, you know, uh, I love to read. And in my healing journey, I bought lots of books. And would read the book and I just with a humble heart would say, you know, my intention is to use this wisdom. And if it works in my body, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So I tried so many things. And again, Qigong was the one that I keep coming back to. You know, yoga was what uh, I really latched on to, you know, in my own life. I went on to open a yoga studio and use yoga as a tool for healing. But my yoga was even infused with Qigong principles. So I call it Yi Chi Yoga. Um, but here's something I'm curious about uh, in your journey. My understanding of Qigong ultimately 
kind of similar to yoga is that it is, it's a process of yes, you know, first we have to heal. We have to heal and restore balance energetically, internally, mind, body, soul. We have to restore balance emotionally. We have to have balance in our material circumstance uh, in order to fully grow and reach our potential, to truly bloom and bear fruit. And so yoga provides a tool, uh, a pathway to do this. And I think in Qigong, it provides also a pathway to do this. And there are in both philosophies a, uh, you know, there's, there's higher levels of experience, right? And I would say, I would call them spiritual experience, but there are, there are higher levels of human potential that we have the opportunity to cultivate and experience. Um, do you have, and can you speak to that? Have you, what is your perspective on kind of what we're capable of as a human being, if you were to take your practice of Qigong and use it simply for self-cultivation, once you've healed, and then, you know, you keep growing from there, what's the, what's that journey look like? <laughs> Very interesting question. <laughs> okay, so first of all, Qigong had many branches. Had five main branches, right? My focus and my gift is Qigong healing, or you can call medical Qigong. Mm. So basically, basically, my focus is Qigong healing for my body and spirit. So that's that my learning, that my, I also believe that, that the gift I receive as well. And then I learn through my world renowned Qigong masters, and then what I receive from my ancestor, my lineage, my grandma. Both sides, my the other side is a it's a monk, very much into Taoist, right? So I receive that I I part of that lineage, and I I am basically inherited some of that wisdom, and then I learn with world renowned Qigong masters here everywhere, and uh, my I can only answer about Qigong healing because I'm. I, I focus on learning and my Qigong healing is teach people how to heal themselves. Well, that means I already can heal myself, but I also teach people to heal themselves and I, I can also help them to heal them as well. So I also do the healing, energy healing. Mm. Um, so, but anybody can heal themselves and can help, help other people heal. So that there is no point that I can say is where it go. I am, I'm already feel that I can help heal myself and I help heal people. And it, it it's amazing. Yeah. And that's the hope. And that's what I want more people to know because they can heal themselves and then they can help others to heal if they want to. Um, and my learning and I, when I heal someone else or help someone else heal, I rely on my like, like you mentioned, the divine or whoever you believe in. It can be your God, whoever that they believe in, that channel that energy to them. The wisdom, the master energy can help. So when I help heal someone else, I'm always calling for my wisdom, wisdom master energy to help me. And that's why I think that's why it's so powerful that when I heal people and like, how that happen? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly how that happened. I know that somebody helped me. So uh, is that answer your question? Where That's do we go from here? I keep practice and I encourage everybody to practice. And of course, I keep learning. The more I learn, the more I want to learn and the more I want to teach. And so that's what I've been doing. I learn, I teach and teach and learn, keep doing that. And, and when, you know, this is, my life purpose and it is something I love, I believe in and I'm passionate about. It's just fun for me. Every every class I teach is fun and the, the student enjoy that and we all have fun. But at the same time, I really want to pass, you know, to teach them something is so simple, mm. but it's so profound. So, so profound that is. Uh... I I think the way that you brought that back to the present moment of healing, that is 
you know, that's life, right? That's reality. Reality is that, you know, every person on the planet is going through life and we are encountering uh, stress. We are encountering chaos. We are encountering sickness and disease. And so it is kind of this perpetual process of healing almost, you know, in Sometimes we're healing wounds that we've had for a long time. Sometimes it's, it's major physical wounds. Sometimes it's major emotional, and I would say even spiritual wounds or deep energetic wounds, things that we're holding in the body. So we have to go through that, and that's a process, you know, and that can be, it's like physical therapy, you know what I mean? Like if you, if you injure your body, I have done thousands of hours of physical therapy. I've been in three major car wrecks. I've had five major surgeries. I mean, I have been in the doctor's office, in the physical therapist's office, lots. And they always want to make you do things that are uncomfortable. Like, oh, you know, I busted my shoulder one time. And then, of course, they say, oh, raise your shoulder, raise your shoulder. I'm like, ah, I can't raise my shoulder. In the same way, in healing internally, you know, sometimes guiding people through that journey is, is causing, you know, it's encouraging them. You have to hold the space and create a, mm -hmm. a you know, well, space, but encouraging them well, to go through that discomfort. The only time we can heal is at the present, being present. And that's the main thing about practice Qigong, bring you to the present moment. Mm. That way, the healing intelligence can do its work. So we have to support the healing intelligence by doing that, create that condition, create that environment so that healing intelligence can do its work. And that's the main thing about practice Qigong healing. Beautiful. Yes. And uh, so what else did I want to say? Um, so when we practice Qigong, we not really focus on physical problem only. We practice my body and spirit. And then from there, it go deep and it heal. Because when we have a pain, not necessarily that is just a message or that is just a symptom, but the cause that what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the what is the cause and fix from the cause. So if we fix from the symptom by taking a quick um, pain relief, it might help very temporary. But the real deep problem is still there. Mm -hmm. So that Qigong is about how that deep go deeper into where the cause, where the root cause, and it address it in a way, melting it away. And <laughs> we cannot, it's easy to explain it, and we don't know until we practice. You don't know until you feel it, you, you, you experience it. And the only way to know is practice. <laughs> so that's why when I did not know, you know, what, Qigong would heal my back. I did not know that. I would not think that I go there to specifically to heal my back. I go practice Qigong, just to practice Qigong. And two weeks, I was completely healed. So then I know, okay, it's deeper. It's deeper than, a, you know, any, you know, thing out there that, um, that I can buy or I, that I can get hold of. And Again, another thing is the healing elixir, the healing intelligence. You have it. No one else can buy it. Okay. So you can only do it for you. And you have access 24 hours. <laughs> and it's free. <laughs> That's what I like to say. <laughs> so I encourage everybody to practice Qigong healing. And I love the elixir. Uh analogy you know or, or the idea of alchem uh, alchemy that we can alchemically transmute you know our body our energy at a very deep very real sort of way uh how would you describe the elixir to somebody that had never heard the term uh you know how do you describe the healing energy, the healing intelligence to somebody that is unfamiliar. They're just coming in for the first time and they think, oh, I need some help because I have a stiff shoulder. And you're thinking, ah, you need to mix up some elixir. You know, you need to go through some Qigong so that you have the healing uh, presence in you. How do, how do you? Well, well it depends. If they, if they did come with a symptom, then, you know, I cannot just jump in and tell them, you know, certain thing. But 
the thing is, I definitely recommend them to do some practice. To, I will show them a few movements and I can take time and I can explain. It depends on where they are and I can explain to them. If they want me to quickly help them to release that pain, I can do that. I can do the energy and transfer some energy to help her, to help him with that pain. Um, but for the main thing, and I want them to understand, be able to heal themselves, then I want them to learn more. So for for instance, I have clients that you know come to me with problem with the, with his elbow like in pain for two three years. He used uh, medicine the the soft like every six month he had a soft everything everything he tried many different things he tried cupping he tried everything nothing helped him long term. I help I heal him, and it's completely gone. Wow. A year and a half ago. He still wrote, he recently wrote me um, a thank you card again. He said a year and a half ago, and he still have not any experience, any more pain. And he said that's something he experienced for three years. And sometimes he want to cut his arm off. And, and so that's why I said I can help heal. But also I want them to learn how to practice, to heal all aspects, all areas mm. yeah, of their life. And then um, another, um, so, and then I, and if they want to learn more, to understand more about Qigong, I do teach, you know, basic to advance. Um, I, I also going to certify, I offer the program to certify um, for, the, um, for the practice group leader and for under Spring for Qigong certification system. So I will be teaching that as well. But yeah, for people who come to me, everybody is welcome because that's the first step. Very, very important first step. Practice Qigong basically help them to be more aware, aware of themselves. And then the, 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 the ailment, the problem, is just another way help them to bring them to the awakening. Mm. Help them to grow in the spirit, spiritual. So that's sometimes, you know, we, unfortunately, we don't like sickness, illness, but many times it's like a way, a, 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 um, a message to guide it, mm -hmm. to, to, to guide it there. So obviously my back was the message or the, or the guide. I wasn't happy with my problem. But then when I understand why I had that problem, that problem helped me to get where I am, become a Qigong teacher, become, become Qigong uh, an energy healer. So that's like, in a way, I now thank, I now thank my problem. <laughs> yes, that is such a, it's a recurrent theme. When I talk to healers, uh, it, it, people who have, I think, you know, grown a lot spiritually in this lifetime, very common is the this learning to pay attention to pain. You know, I always say pain is saying pay attention. It's it's life talking to me. Something's out of balance. Something's pulling my awareness, my attention into this you know direction. And ultimately, that pain is is placing signposts that are that are pointing me toward elevated inner awareness. I love that you said you know to increase awareness, and you know. When we are suffering in pain, you know, it's it, it's really easy to to think that that is, like you said, we're well, going to just accept it. Like this is just about I'm just going to hurt for the rest of my life, and I've tried all these things and nothing's going to change it. And you know, I've tried all the Western medicine. Now, maybe I've even tried you know acupuncture and I've tried massage and cupping and and that's great. Those modalities are powerful and in, in the right place at the right time, they will in fact heal. And yet there is something so often deeper that's driving these patterns of pain in life and uh, particularly pain related to depression pain. And so, so much of neck pain and shoulder pain a lot of times is comes from internal tension. And so it's, it's a muscular imbalance and tension. This is uh, what I've you know, learned through study and experience. But the, to come back to the, uh, the elixir and the alchemy for just a second, the magic of it uh, is that we don't have to understand. 
to, to experience the release, we don't have to understand. So you're able to help somebody heal because you understand and can apply it to their body system. They may not understand that. They may not want to understand that. Maybe they just need to come see you every couple of years or whenever something goes wrong. But your heart and your mission and your purpose is to teach people how to heal themselves. And I think that that is just phenomenal because that is human potential. If we can heal ourselves at the individual level, then we can heal our families. We can heal our communities. We can heal the world. This is how it happens. You know, one person at a time going through that alchemical transformation uh, to, the, to anybody that, that questions uh, like the elixir, for example, like, oh, come on, the golden elixir, you know, this kind of stuff is, is, is mythical. It's story. Yes. And no, it is actually reality and something that is practical in healing if you know that man's arm is just one example of of so many the fact that i didn't have to amputate my foot is another you know story after story of story millions of people have the same story you know this is real it does work you don't have to understand it but it's advantageous if you do and i love how there is healing in all the world traditions you said your was it your grandma was catholic you know, and so in Catholic, I spent a month in India, for example, and during my time there, I spent one week working at Mother Teresa House, which is a Catholic, it's, you know, it's a monastery, right? So it's all about serving those who need the most service and healing. And so to be there with people from all around the world who have come only simply to serve, you know, I see I'm not Catholic. I don't go to Catholic church. I don't subscribe to Catholic faith, but I did see an undeniable uh, you know, healing going on there. There, there is the divine presence that God is in that place and working miracles, right? Like this, this is the life force energy. This is the highest human potential to share the love and the healing energy with people. And because the world needs it, humanity needs the healing so badly. Uh, I just think that, you know, the spiritual gift of healing is honored in all traditions, whether it's Taoism, Qigong, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, you know, you name it, you pick the path, any spiritual somewhere along the line is this activation of gifts of, of a higher potential. And to me, I think yes, that's so Qigong is very aligned with the Taoism. Yeah. But I am not religious, Qigong not religious, it is spiritual. Ah. So no, no religion. So I, my, my one, my grandmother is a, like a monk, like a Buddhist monk. One, my other, my grandmother is Catholic. But I look at them as the same. It's just spiritual being, and and that's what I am. I just spirit being. I'm not religious. I look at everybody, you know, with that, you know, love. Love is the main thing. It's love is the key here. So no matter what religion is, love is one and that's the most powerful thing. Yes. And that's what I, you know, focus and practice and cultivate. Uh, and that that's all about all, all the religions are all trying to get mankind into the happier enlightenment, you know, enlightenment state. And um, so they all have that. Um, beautiful uh goal so so i look at it as spiritual not not religion for me mm-hmm. and um you you want to you want to experience a little bit what qigong energy power how powerful it is to experience qigong, qigong energy it? right now yeah i can show you <laughs> yes right absolutely. now right here Listen, yes. <laughs> sure i would love to okay. So have you have you uh, played a game? It's called finger growing. So we're gonna grow your finger now, okay? okay? So that you know how how powerful it is. So you look at your wrist right here, and your wrist right here. You you align. You're matching the line together, and then you close your hands, and then you will see one finger a little bit shorter than the other. Right? They're not completely even, right? Mm-hmm. So. The one that have shorter finger, you raise up. Which one have shorter finger? You raise that one up. Now you're gonna start sending the G. You mentioned the G. The G follow the G. Yeah, you can focus on take three gentle deep breath in through your nose, 
And then exhale, relaxing your shoulders. And then now you're going to send, as you keep breathing in and out, send the energy to your finger, help that finger to grow longer and longer. Send in the G there, inhale, and then exhale. Keep sending energy there. Feel your finger gets expand, the joint are expanding and grow longer and longer. With a tender smile on your face and focus on that breath and the energy, send the energy to your fingers. Okay, one or two more breath in and out. Mm. Feel your finger grow longer. All right, now you can bring them back and compare and see how long that finger grow. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Does it's it grow? <laughs> Does it grow a lot? <laughs> now it looks not too short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I we were really enjoying it and seeing that because our our energy is follow our thought too. So when we think about positive, positive thing will happen, right? So in Qigong, we try to, you know, help people to see things higher vibration look at things in high vibration. And a lot of practice help us to ground and help us to set ourselves in the high, high, higher vibration <laughs> and also create a G fuel that protecting us and then also create a G fuel in anywhere that we, we, we go to. So, so uh, thank you for that. That was really, that was really interesting. I've not done that exercise. Uh, I've done quite a few Qigong exercises for, uh, in, in the beginning, learning how to sense Qi, uh, how to then direct it to circulate it, going through things like the microcosmic orbit, uh, to, to cultivate and to store up chi before channeling it out and then holding. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is something that I just, I would encourage any and every listener, if you haven't played with your own energy or your own subtle body energy, then you are missing out because it's not only is it magical, but it's fun. And not only is it fun, but it's functional because when you learn how to circulate your chi, how to channel your chi, how to move it. This is how we unlock healing potential. And ultimately we don't have to understand it. Ultimately we have to trust and get the head out of the way because the heart, the soul knows how to heal as, as Jasmine said, uh, as you were saying, but that, you know, that's such a neat experience. I wish for every person to have that. So my question for you right now would be Jasmine, uh, what, uh, if somebody was just like, wow, I really love this idea of Qigong, of healing, of unleashing that healer within me. I love Jasmine's energy, the light and her smile. How can I connect with her? Where, where's the best place? How's best for someone to connect with you? Sure. Um, they can connect me to, uh, uh my website, my email and my Facebook group. My website is activatequigonghealing.com. Awesome. My Facebook group is Central Florida Qigong Healing. And uh, my email is jasmine.win, W-I-N, at yahoo.com. Awesome. And so I also have the course that I put together online uh, on, uh, I, on Udemy uh, platform. So if you interested to learn about Qigong, you can find me and yeah, get that course at the basic foundation and also nine wonderful Qigong movement filmed in nature by the waterfall. <laughs> so if you love nature and if you love Qigong or want to learn about Qigong, that's a great place to start. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure to put the uh, to the links in the description for this podcast for sure. Uh, something that I've noticed, you know, in in your you have such a playful demeanor, and in your Qigong classes, I actually I think the first time I had connected with you, you were teaching in a in a I think it was a global healing summit, 
and you were teaching uh, Qigong class there. And I participated my, with my daughter and uh, she loved it. I loved it, but it was very uh, just playful. And it's not, it's not a, a structured, stern meditation. Like, okay, now, you know, cause sometimes I think about like the old Tai Chi masters, like, no, psha, you know, like you gotta be just like this, you know? <laughs> and I love the uh, the lightheartedness that you bring to the practice. So I'm so glad you pointed out. Thank you, thank you. Because I ancient practice, right? Qigong ancient practice over seven thousand years. Yes, it. People think about something like very very weird or strange, but no, I brought it. I make it like I can say that I'm a modern day Qigong instructor. So I bring the ancient practice all the wisdom that pack into that but I make it fun and I make it doable and it's very simple and uh and then having fun that's the key so qigong is very fun so should I want to make people realize how fun qigong is Mm -hmm. and in my class people giggling and laughing and that's amazing and that's what then you know that's that's what we love about it's having fun but in and healing it happen when you're having fun and when you're at the present moment if you are thinking somewhere else the healing intelligence can't do the work like oh it's, it's not present so yeah the, they say that healing anybody can anybody can can practice qigong even though they have problem with physical problem they can sit thing standing or laying down yeah yeah anybody can practice and because a lot of visualization right so one more thing before we're running out of time so when i'm thinking about qigong and i'm thinking about different ways and a lot of it like in um hawaiian dance in hawaiian and a lot of hookalao hookalao thing i feel like a lot of it somehow somewhere that have a little bit qigong in there because a lot of visualization a lot of here and now moment present and a lot of arm holding up like this so i thought wow that's interesting so i'm gonna i'm gonna make qigong a lot more fun that's awesome (laughs) that is so awesome i you know laughter is good medicine lightheartedness it helps relax and i think that that helps facilitate the flow of of energy the flow of chi you know if we're so rigid and trying to focus it's like trying to learn and dancing you know if you're trying to learn and do it just right you, it causes restriction. It causes, you know, it it slows down the flow of energy, and so we don't experience it as much. So I just, uh, for any, you know, for anybody and everybody, I would say, shed the doubt and try it out. You know, that that's right. the you have to experience it for yourself to really right. know. And when you do, I would wonder for many people if it if the experience of qigong is not like what you experience. You know, it was a coming home. It's a coming home to. Uh, to what is the most natural expression of your own inner wisdom. Great. And I say that as a certified yoga teacher, you know, experienced yoga teacher, continuing education provider. I've taught thousands and thousands of hours of yoga. Uh, there was a period of time where I was teaching 35 yoga classes a week. So, I mean, I love yoga and yoga is a powerful, powerful tool. But I would say uh, Qigong is, is a sister discipline it is the same it is the same wisdom coming out in different ways but qigong is so magical it is so powerful it is so wonderful of a gift to be sharing with the world i am just uh, i'm super grateful jasmine that you were uh, able to be here today that you were able to share because that's uh, i think so much what the world needs is healing so much what the world needs is is lightheartedness to elevate and to be present in the moment and so thank you well, for being present. Yeah, thank you. I feel like everybody can find something that they resonate with. Okay. Mm-hmm. So anything that, that help them to bring them home, to bring them to back to their authentic city, mm-hmm. that that they're true to them. For me, Qigong does. And hopefully many of you find Qigong that way too, but no matter what way, but it keeps asking and keep fighting. And if you don't find anything, definitely come to Qigong. I will help you. And then let you explore. It doesn't hurt to explore, but Qigong is fun and very deep and very profound. It's packed with thousand years of wisdom and then we are benefit from it. Mm, yeah. To stay open and to stay curious, to stay humble and to grow, I think that is the... Uh, 
the heart of every person that's on the spiritual path. So Jasmine, thank you for your wisdom. Uh, thank you for the conversation. It's been awesome. Thank you for joining me on the Soul Path podcast. And I hope that you truly have a very terrific Tuesday. And I'll look forward to continuing to connect with you in the future as well. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a great pleasure. You are wonderful. And thank you. Thank you for doing it and sharing um, your wisdom and help many people to inspire many people. And so thank you so much. Thank you, man. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. I mean, so many things. Uh, so simple, yet so, so profound. Like it was said, uh, just pain as, you know, seeing pain as signposts that are pointing us back to our inner awareness, uh, how this, how love is the most powerful healing force. These things are um, just what we need right now for healing and restoring balance uh, to bloom and to bear fruit in order to be the best that we can be in order to help uplift humanity, in order to serve, to be present, to show up and shine our light in the world. We need to heal. And Maybe part of that healing journey for you is to play with Qigong, circulating your own energy. Again, if you haven't had the experience of, of playing with your own energy, just I, I invite you to do that. Reach out to Jasmine, reach out to myself, make the connection, involve the right people who are going to support you in this mission and continue uh, to grow. So with that... Friends, thank you. Please like and subscribe and share this conversation with your friends. We want more people to hear the good news that we can heal ourselves and to have that hope and that optimism that we don't have to be stuck dealing with the pain. Uh, there, there is a path to healing, to restoring life and well-being and balanced abundance. So please like, subscribe and share with your friends. And I'll look forward to connecting with you soon. Mm -hmm.